On a spot in the ocean where Manila Bay meets the South China Sea, a little-known structure stands alone amidst thrashing waves. Most Filipinos know nothing of its existence, but this island fortress played a significant role in Philippine history. El Frile Island, also known as Fort Drum, is a concrete battleship that the Americans built in 1909. On a little islet of rocks, a concrete structure 350 feet long and 144 feet wide was built. The 40-foot high, 30-foot thick walls were fortified and ready for all sorts of naval attacks. This unique structure, resembling a battleship and complete with armored turrets, is the only one of its kind in the world. Heavily armed with some of the biggest cannons and guns at the time, Fort Drum was the most powerful of the American coastal defenses in the Philippines. The Board of Fortifications chaired by William H. Taft recommended that key harbors of territories acquired by the United States after the Spanish-American War be fortified five consequently, El Frile Island was fortified and incorporated into the harbor defenses of Manila and Subic Bays. Longitudinal section initially Fort Drum was planned as a mine control and mine casemate station. However, due to inadequate defenses in the area, a plan was devised to level the island, and then build a concrete structure on top of it armed with four 12-inch, 305mm, guns in Twin Mount 6. This was submitted to the War Department, which decided to change the 12-inch, 305mm, guns to 14-inch, 356mm, guns mounted in twin armored turrets. The forward turret, with a traverse of 230 degrees, was mounted on the forward portion of the upper deck, which was 9 feet, 2.7 m, below the top deck, the rear turret, with a full 360 degrees traverse, was mounted on the top deck. The guns of both turrets were capable of 15 degrees elevation, giving them a range of 19,200 yards, 17,600 m, Dot seven secondary armament was provided by two pairs of 6-inch, 152 mm, guns mounted in armored casemates on either side of the main structure. There were two 3-inch, 76 mm, mobile A guns on spider mounts for anti-aircraft defense, probably the 3-inch gun M1918 and probably added circa 1918 8 overhead protection of the fort was provided by a 20-foot, 6.1 m, Thick steel reinforced concrete deck 9 Its exterior walls ranged between approximately 25 to 36 feet, 7.6 to 11.0 m, thick, making it virtually impregnable to enemy naval attack 10. Construction began in April 1909 and lasted for five years. The rocky island was leveled by U.S. Army engineers and then was built up with thick layers of steel reinforced concrete. Philippines Campaign 1941-1942, the successful invasion of Luzon by the Japanese Imperial Army in late December 1941 quickly brought land forces within range of Fort Drum and the other Manila Bay forts. Just before the outbreak of war in the Pacific on December 7, 1941, Fort Drum had been rest aft with men and officers of the 59th Coast Artillery Regiment, E Battery. The wooden barracks located on the fort's deck were dismantled to provide an unobstructed field of fire for Battery Wilson. On January 2, 1942, Fort Drum withstood heavy Japanese air bombardment. On January 12, 1942, an M1903 3-inch, 76 mm, seacoast gun with a pedestal mount was transferred from Fort Frank and installed at Fort Drum to help protect the fort's vulnerable stern section from attack, and it was named Battery Hoyle. The very next day on January 13, before the concrete emplacement was fully dry and the gun had been boresighted or checked for assurance level, it became the first American battery of seacoast artillery to open fire on the enemy in World War II when it drove off a Japanese commandeered inter-island steamer, apparently bent on a close inspection of Fort Drum's vulnerable rear approach. Until that time, the cage mast control tower masked the fire of the rear main turret, while the height of the gun above water created a dead space even had the field of fire been clear 8 the first week of February 1942 saw the fort come under sustained fire from Japanese 150mm howitzer batteries positioned on the mainland near Ternate. 
By the middle of March, the Japanese had moved heavy artillery into range, opening fire with 240mm siege howitzers, destroying Fort Drum's 3-inch anti-aircraft battery, disabling one of the 6-inch guns, and damaging one of the armored casemates. Sizable portions of the fort's concrete structure were chipped away by the shelling. The armored turrets were not damaged and remained in service throughout the bombardment 20 counter-battery fire from Fort Drum's 14-inch guns and Fort Frank's 12-inch mortars was ineffective. With the collapse of American and Filipino resistance in Bataan on April 10, only Fort Drum and the other harbor forts remained in U.S. hands. On the night of May 5, the 14-inch batteries of Fort Drum opened fire on the second wave of the Japanese forces assaulting Corregidor, sinking several troop barges and inflicting heavy casualties Fort Drum surrendered to Japanese forces following the fall of Corregidor on May 6, 1942, and was subsequently occupied by them until 1945 the 20 feet thick reinforced concrete roof enabled Fort Drum to withstand the concentrated and frequent pounding it received from the Japanese from about 15. February to May 6, 1942. No U.S. personnel in Fort Drum were killed during the siege and only five were injured. The four 14-inch turret guns were never out of action and were still firing effectively five minutes before the fall of Corregidor 9 as at the other forts in the Philippines. Fort Drum's garrison executed destruction procedures on the guns prior to the Japanese arriving to secure the fort. This is why one 14-inch gun has fallen back inside its turret. The surrender of the Manila Bay forts marked the end of U.S. resistance in the Philippines. In 1945 following the offensive to recapture Manila, the heavily fortified island was the last position in the bay that was held by the Japanese a landing ship medium, LSM, was modified with a bridge structure to allow troops to run directly from the ship to the top deck of the fort. After a heavy aerial and naval bombardment, U.S. troops gained access to the deck of the fort on April 13 and were able to confine the garrison below. Rather than attempting to break in, the troops and engineers adapted the solution first used some days earlier in the assault of a mortar battery on Fort Hughes. There, the troops pumped 2,500 U.S. gallons, 9,500 L, of two parts diesel fuel and one part gasoline through a vent shaft into the battery, and ignited it with white phosphorus mortar rounds, repeating this twice on subsequent days. Company F of the 2nd Battalion, 151st Infantry Regiment, 38th Infantry Division, part of the Fort Hughes attack, was chosen for the assault on Fort Drum along with a detachment of the 113th Combat Engineer Battalion. At Fort Drum, a similar technique was employed, using air vents on the top deck, but a timed fuse was used rather than incendiary grenades upon ignition, the remaining Japanese were killed, the flammable mixture kept a fire burning in the fort for several days. It was five days before the fortress could finally be examined with the Manila Bay forts neutralized, including Fort Drum, Japanese resistance in the Bay Area ended. The ruins of Fort Drum, including its disabled turrets and 14, 356 mm, guns, remain at the mouth of Manila Bay, abandoned since World War II. The fort started being desecrated by looters in the 1970s, seeking scrap metal inside the fort for resale the activity has stopped according to a report in 2009 an automated light was recently when installed by the philippine coast guard on the top deck for guiding ships entering the south channel of manila bay if you like this video please click the bell icon and subscribe